So what happened after the collision? The force of the impact blasted a huge amount of material from both Earth and Thea into orbit. Over time, that cloud of molten debris, caught in Earth's gravity, began to clump together. Slowly, it coalesced into what we now call the Moon. So the Moon was literally born from this catastrophic collision. That's an origin story for the ages. It really is. So not just Earth's child, but Earth's twin, born in the same fire. But still, something changed. The Moon isn't just a clone of Earth. It's different. Right. For one thing, it's incredibly dry. That tells us something important about what happened in the aftermath. How volatile elements behaved during this violent birth. That makes sense. But if the moon formed from Earth, why is it so different in some ways? Like, why is it so dry? That's one of the big mysteries. The moon is depleted in volatile elements, things like water, carbon, and nitrogen, especially when compared to Earth. Volatile elements? What does that mean exactly? They're substances with relatively low boiling points, things that easily become gas or vapor. Think of water turning to steam. Or carbon dioxide bubbling out of a soda. Ah, so when we say the moon is depleted in volatiles, it means it's missing many of the elements that make Earth so vibrant and habitable. Exactly. And scientists have a few theories to explain that. One idea is that the material that formed the moon was already low in volatiles. Another is that the heat from the impact was so intense it vaporized these elements. And sent them drifting off into space. A third theory: the moon might have slowly lost them over billions of years. So it could have started dry, had a fiery purge, or just leaked over time, or maybe all three. That's right. But here's the fascinating twist: even with all those differences, the moon is absolutely vital to life on Earth. Oh, I've heard about that. It has to do with the moon's gravity, right? It does. Yes, the moon's gravity helps stabilize Earth's axial tilt. The angle at which our planet spins. Without the moon, that tilt could wobble wildly over time, triggering extreme climate shifts that would make life much harder to sustain. So the moon is like a cosmic gyroscope. That's a perfect analogy. It keeps Earth steady. Yes, and that stability is key. It helps maintain a relatively consistent climate, which is one of the reasons life was able to develop and thrive here. I'm really starting to see how that all is one idea fits. Earth and Moon aren't just neighbors; they're partners in a cosmic dance. Exactly, and there's more. The Moon's gravitational pull also creates tides, which are essential for moving ocean water, circulating nutrients, and possibly even helping life get started in the first place. I never realized how crucial the Moon is, not just to Earth's motion, but to life itself. We really do owe it more than we think. The moon is so important, and it's not just a companion; it's also a kind of time capsule. Its surface preserves ancient features, untouched by weather or tectonics, offering clues about what the early solar system was really like. And it holds one of the strangest mysteries in planetary science: something called the isotopic crisis. The isotopic crisis? Now you've got me intrigued. You should be. Here's the deal. One of the main goals of the Apollo missions was to bring back lunar rocks. When scientists analyzed those samples, they discovered something totally unexpected: the isotopic compositions of certain elements in the Moon and Earth were nearly identical. Wait, what do you mean by isotopic compositions? Great question. Think of atoms like tiny building blocks. Isotopes are versions of the same block, made of the same stuff, but with a small difference in weight. Usually because of an extra neutron. For example, carbon 12 and carbon 13 are both carbon, but carbon 13 is just a little heavier. So by comparing isotopes, scientists can trace where stuff came from, like atomic fingerprints. Correct. And here's why it's a problem. If the moon formed from a collision with another planet-like body, Theia, you'd expect its isotopic fingerprints to be different from Earth's, but they're not. They're almost indistinguishable. That's wild. So either Theia was nearly identical to Earth, or something happened that completely mixed the two. Precisely, and that's the puzzle scientists have been wrestling with for decades. 
So how do scientists explain that uncanny isotopic similarity? Well, one idea is that Theia wasn't some distant wanderer from another part of the solar system, but formed close to Earth, meaning it had a similar composition to begin with. Or maybe the impact itself, like a cosmic billiard shot, sideswiped the Earth and mixed the materials more evenly? Maybe. But there's an even more mind-bending idea. The Synestia Hypothesis. Synestia? That sounds... wild. It is. This structure, called a Synestia, was like a cosmic blender. It thoroughly mixed the material from both bodies, before gradually cooling and condensing into what became the Earth and the Moon. That's incredible. It explains the isotopic match and the Moon's lack of volatile elements in one go. Exactly. And we can actually see what this might have looked like. Let's bring up a recent simulation from NASA. Using one of the world's most powerful supercomputers, NASA created this high-resolution simulation of a Synestia, a short-lived planetary structure born from the collision between Earth and Theia. It reveals a moment when Earth wasn't a planet as we know it, but a swirling, incandescent storm of vaporized rock. For a brief time, Earth wasn't a planet with a moon. It was a spinning, chaotic mass, hot, unstable, and alien. And the moon formed within that? That's the idea. Not from a distant ring of debris, but inside this structure where the materials of both worlds mingled. As the Synestia cooled, the Earth reformed at the center, and the moon condensed from the outer vapor. So the moon wasn't just born from Earth's debris, it was shaped in a crucible that blended two worlds into one. 